What's going on YouTube? Kamikaze Von Doom here with another Division 2 video. Shout out to the DoD Disciples of Doom. Now in this video we're actually going to do a full year 2 review because technically year 2 is going to come to an end and there's it's looking like there's not going to be any fireworks, there's not going to be any happy you know year 3, nothing like that and in fact, it's seeming that they push the timeline for any news to be, what does it say here? Uh, 15 weeks, basically. Uh, so 15 weeks from today is the next time we're going to get some sort of news or content just based off of their new counter that they added to Season 4. However, Season 4 is actually going to end in about, what's it, two weeks? Here we go. Um, so in about two weeks, the season four is supposed to end, and we're supposed to get year three. Um, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to go over everything that happened in year two, just so everyone can get like a refresher of what's been going on this year, and then we will talk about the future. Because um, as the devs have said, they were planning on TU-12 being the last major update of this game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over what was added, what was, you know, uh, developed all during year two. And uh, we can, you know, send out our hopes and dreams for what we want to see in year three. But now that we know that year three is coming, however, it's just going to be pushed to, you know, a later date. Um, we can at least focus on what's going on in year two and celebrate the end of that. Now, if that all sounds good, go ahead, relax, grab your popcorn, and let's get into it. Now, the start of year two was Title Update 8, and Title Update 8 gave us Warlords of New York. So, Warlords of New York, if you back out, poop -a doo here we go, New York Expansion. This was all added for year two. This is uh, what came out March of 2020. Now, with Title Update 8 and Warlords of New York, we also got the new factions. You remember that the Cleaners were introduced in, I believe, Coney Island, working with uh, the Black Tusk. And then you see them more here, but then you also see the Rikers and, uh, you know, stuff like that but we also had the new gear 2.0 where not only did the levels go up to level 40 but if you didn't buy the expansion you were also able to level up your gear from gear score 500 to gear score 515 and um, with that they also changed the skill power because you remember we used to just have skill power but now we have skill tiers not only that, but they also introduced the uh, overcharge at the end of your skill tiers. Um, with all of that, uh, Warlords of New York, it, it was all right. Um, everyone enjoyed going back to New York City, even though it wasn't, you know, snowing. But we did enjoy it. Um, it was taken very well. The Dark Zone changes were okay. I'm still not a fan of them getting rid of the Thieves' Den, but that's another conversation. Um, but they did change a few things where, you know, the manhunt ranks and all that and the leaderboards, they, they added a few things for year two. Now, of course, uh, right after Warlords of New York, we had title update uh, 8.4, which uh, was just like little tweaks for gameplay. Uh, title 8.5, more gameplay. Title update 9, reconfiguring the exotics. Now, that was when um, they told us all publicly that they wanted to have exotics not feel too powerful and uh, make it to where you have to adapt to their certain, you know, gameplay, whether it be the Pestilence and the Plague of Outcasts, whether it be, you know, the Scorpio and landing those shots and timing your reload and stuff like that. But yet they still came out with this weapon, the Lady Death which has been reworked um it's also been nerfed for pvp and it is still 
probably the number one weapon used in PvP right now. Uh, besides, you know, the FAL. Um, so right after that, we kept going through these title updates. Um, n nothing big changing at all. The player balancing in 9.1 was pretty minimal. Weapon balancing, title update 10, again, minimal. That was whenever they were doing, you know, the rifles were too strong, and then the ARs were too strong, and then the rifles were not strong enough, and then the snipers were too strong. Um, that's when they just kept doing this patch after patch after patch, trying to balance things PvP-wise. Uh, all meanwhile, uh, Red Storm was already done with the PvP side of this game. So all of these, you know, weapon balancing and tweaks and then the Lady Death and tweaking of that, that was all done by Massive, not Red Storm. Red Storm, the last thing that they did was they gave us uh, Team Elimination. They gave us, uh, I think it was Rogue 2.0, if I'm not mistaken. And then they pretty much bounced. Um, but going back to these title updates, uh, title update 10.1, they tried to do loot changes. Remember that uh, they did loot changes for 10.1, uh, 11. Um, they did, let's see, I believe they did loot changes three times in total. And then uh, obviously TU12, we saw the introduction of the optimization station and, uh, you know, saw what that gave us. Now, as far as TU11, TU11 did give us the new directives. It did give us Operation Iron Horse Discovery Mode. It gave us um, the Summit, which was pretty cool um, for about five seconds. And then they also gave us Agnostic Mods, the Appearance Mods. Now, whenever they announced that, I know I was very verbal about uh, what was going on there. And I just felt that they said that it was something the community wanted um, since the division, which here you go. So right here, appearance slot. I can change, you know, any piece of my gear to look a certain way, which they were saying this is what we wanted ever since uh, Division One. And the reason in Division One the community wanted that is because in the dark zone, you would see that they're you that they were running a certain gear set, whether it be Pred, Nomad. Uh, Banshee, Final Measure, you could you could spot it from a mile away. And then you're like, oh, okay, I know what they're running. And then you could switch your build accordingly and then mow them down. That's why we wanted appearance mods in the Division 1. But in the, the Division 2, by the time Title Update 11 came along, no one was asking for that. We were asking for more content, whether it be another PvP map in Conflict, whether it be a New York City Dark Zone, that would have made the PvP community shut up, and you would have been fine. But instead, it was nothing, and then you got these appearance mods, and then everyone's like, WTF? And uh, we, we all saw how that went. Now, what I am skipping over uh, for some of this, let me see if I can find it here. So the Operation uh, Iron Horse Raid, and let's see, the game changes. Um, here we go. So right there between title update 9 and 11, we also had those glitches. Um, and that's whenever we had the ban wave happen. Um, that's where the community took a, a large hit. I know there's a lot new and upcoming agents that are playing the game now, but... Uh, you know, about a few months into year two, and they were doing the band wave, uh, a lot of really hardcore veteran players um, actually left this game completely because of that. Now, talking about title update 12, reason why I'm going over these title updates is because they were saying that title update 12 was meaning to be their last for the game. So looking at title update 12, we got the content of optimization station, uh, some summit changes, which were minor. We can always show our mask, which is also pretty minor. Um, they did increase our inventory size to that 115. 
they did increase our loadout size and you know they gave us a few more brand sets and gear sets um as far as that being the last ever the only thing i can see that like made that known is the optimization station but they never said that was the last ever they just said it was coming but it was going to cost you a lot therefore you had to grind optimize your gear but it wasn't the end i'm pretty sure trick dempsey um said that in one of the past state of the games that it was going to cost a lot because they didn't want the agent to just max out their gear and be done they wanted them to have to grind for it so what they ended up doing was doubling back cutting the cost down 75 percent and then you have people like me that are walking around with these kind of builds where everything is fully maxed out and it's because now they gave us you know a reason to do it it's cheaper so with all this said and done we got four major title updates title update 8 9 10 11 and 12 now 8 wasn't really the major that was your expansion that you actually had to pay for um, so I wouldn't really count that too much so 9 through 12 was year 2 as far as title updates and yeah we did get seasons and some exotics brand sets gear sets that were new but uh, that's about it the entire map you can see right here this is all the exact same uh, all of these are the exact same we did get New York for title update 8 and then we got the summit for title update 11 but that was it so these two spots we can fast travel are the only two new things that came to the game as far as content wise now you can argue that the seasons are content um, yes that's true however you can't do these on each character the only thing you can do on each character are the manhunt targets you can't do the league on each character because it doesn't count separately uh, you can farm the global event stars but that's not really going to be too helpful now um, on each character you could just do that on one character so you can see how as far as content wise uh, you're not you're not really adding too much you're just re recycling the same activities to try to keep the agent busy same with the projects they did add some projects here you can see the season pass project for season pass people you have the daily the weeklies and all of this which are fine but all it is is recycled just to keep you playing the game so as far as year two as a whole once you beat the new york campaign and reached level 40 that was pretty much it for year two um, there were no pvp uh, additions to the game at all uh, not a single thing in the entirety of year two and the only pve thing that was added was the summit as far as game modes now yes you can change your mod uh, your directives and they would recycle different directives and say oh hey now now it's scavenge skills and stuff like that which is okay they kept uh, you know cycling out these directives but as far as additional content there there has not been any so this whole public statement you know saying a lot of you have noticed that title update 12 was supposed to be our last is a complete and utter mindfuck excuse my language but come on there is no way in hell that that was ever assumed except for by the theorists you know the conspiracy theorists um i love rogue gold to death uh he's a really cool guy he even did the podcast with me awesome dude very smart and yes he told us so he thought they were done and you know boom you know he got that but a majority of the community as a whole none of us knew none of the devs said anything the only thing we had were some content creators were making videos saying i think it's over and that was about it 
Um, so them publicly stating that TU-12 was actually supposed to be the last major update was a complete and utter letdown um, for not only us as a consumer, but just the community as a whole. Like, they didn't even say a word. They kept that so secret. Um, so the fact that we're not going to get, you know, fireworks and, hey, happy year three, um, that's why I'm making this video. Just to cap with what we got in TU-12, or not TU-12, but what we got up until TU-12 and year two as a whole, that way we know what we got the previous year and we can try to, you know, base our expectations and set a baseline for the hype because, you know, don't don't get your hype up too much. In TU-12, or in uh, year two, they gave us New York and they gave us the summit. Um, yeah, they made us go from level 30 to 40 and then they made us go up 100 floors. But in hindsight, that's about it. Same dark zones, same exact, same exact dark zones. And uh, yeah, conflict is, uh, man. All right, so the problem I have with conflict, I'm sorry, this is turning into a rant video now. The problem I have with conflict is that they made it to where your XP from PVP activities, meaning the dark zone and conflict, apply to your watch level. However, if you go over here, you can see per conflict level, it's only 10,000 XP. What they didn't tell you, meaning the devs, is that the average player for conflict doesn't even get a thousand XP a match. A match. So you're converting that to watch level XP, where you can see right here that's 700,000 per level. So it, doing that math, on average, it's going to take you 700 conflict matches to level up once on your watch. And if you convert that to the dark zone, if you go over to the invaded dark zone, right here, you can see it with the emblem, there's going to be at least three to five heroic landmarks. And if you do just one of those landmarks, you will get enough XP to level up your watch completely. So you're telling me I could spend two minutes in the dark zone to level up my watch one level, or on average, I could spend 700 conflict matches to get one level on my watch. Now, uh, if you can with a straight face say that that's okay, let me know in the comment section. And in fact, if you think that's not okay, let me know in the comment section. Because people like me that enjoy conflict, um, it's pretty much a F you to that community because no matter how much conflict you pay or you play, you're not going to level up your watch. So yeah, my watch level is pretty low compared to the average person, and that's because I play a lot of conflict. I don't get a lot of XP because of that. And that's just like a number of things that they could fix, but it's still yet to be, you know, talked about. Another thing is the hardcore game mode. Hardcore was, or yeah, the hardcore mode was introduced right before year two. And they have not said a word about the hardcore game mode since then. And if you go to start a new character and toggle it to hardcore, it still says in beta mode, which has been over a year and they have yet to even talk about it. <laughs> Let alone if you do year two activities on your hardcore character you get no additional rewards, no pa uh, patches, no anything. They added absolutely zero to that as well. So I know that this, you know, kind of rant review video is, you know, pretty much a negative, and it, it's kind of on purpose because what I'm trying to do is let you guys know honestly that year two was not great for the division year two sucked um but 
for Massive and for Ubisoft, year two was great because they had four different seasons that they were able to charge, what what was it, like 10, 10 or 15 bucks an agent? So per person, I mean, they were making a lot of money. And not only that, but then Warlords of New York, they were making a lot of money off of that as well. So I completely understand why they would continue this game and add more content to it because we are giving them money. Um, but as far as content wise, are we getting what we're paying for in return? Uh, it, it's it's up to debate. Um, because if you're a PvP player, the answer would be hell no. Like this isn't worth a dime because I haven't gotten any PvP love in over a year and a half. And if you're a PvE player, I mean, yeah. Now you can do legendary strongholds, you can do legendary summit. The only thing you're missing now are a legendary world um, global modifier and legendary missions but I'm sure that'll come because these are little bitty fixes that they could claim as content and then you'd be good now with all this being said I am really happy that they are continuing content for this game I am very bummed out that they decided to add that blurb about title update 12 in that message because that raised so many questions that they could have avoided but instead they said that and that threw a wrench into everyone's thought process because I was hyped for year three I had other content creators hyped for year three we were like man March is gonna be nice we get to play new stuff do this and now it's like maybe we'll get to see something new in like June maybe August I mean they said later in 2021 I think like three times in that devs message and it was alarming because they made sure to write that you know two three times later in 2021 later this year meaning no time soon it's about to be the beginning of year three, and we are not even going to get anything. Any other time, whether it be The Division all three years, or whether it be The Division 2 where you had year two, there was some sort of celebration, some sort of, you know, hey guys, we, we made it, it's another year, and we're going to celebrate by doing this. Or, hey guys, we've got an event coming, and we're doing this. Hey guys, we have an expansion, and we're doing this. And instead, what we are getting is that, hey guys, that last title update was supposed to be the last. But because you guys have bitched and complained, we'll give you some more content later in 2021. So, if you were to ask me, hey Kami, what would you expect? For year three I would sit you down and honestly say year three we're gonna get content in the middle to last half of this year meaning no earlier than June and it's going to extend or they're going to stretch that content 12 months and it's gonna be probably you know June to June August to August something like that because I don't see I don't see it gonna be anything else other, other than that because from the sound of it they're not gonna treat this game uh, as honorably as they did the last one at all and they're not gonna treat their community that way either um, and if they have some sort of surprising revelation tomorrow and they give us some amazing whatever I'll be the first one to say hallelujah I'm so happy I was wrong let's eat up this new content but uh, I'm just trying to let you guys know my expectations are pretty low so much so that I might even play some Outriders and uh, yeah I never thought I'd say that so that's another thing if you guys have stuck around and listened to my lame ass talk this whole time and you're gonna play Outriders let me know in the comment section below say you know uh, hell yeah Outriders you know whatever and maybe I'll make some videos on it because uh, 
for right now, it's seeming as if we will not get content for a while. Um, and if this new countdown is accurate, that's about May to June. And if that's the case, that means that's probably going to be when they're going to announce something big or, you know, something along those lines. So as far as grinding out your gear and fully optimizing it, I highly recommend you guys do that now because there's no telling what they're going to throw at us. Maybe it'll be another level increase. Uh, I don't know. But let me know in the comments section below how you guys feel. This is the end of year two in full review. Not only that, but with my critiques and with my, I guess, optimism and reluctant uh, hype when it comes to uh, additional content. But let me know in the comment section below how you guys feel. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for sticking along. Shout out to the DoD Disciples of Doom. Don't forget to hit that like. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.